In this video, I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite herbs right now, which is Makuna. I'm going to be answering some questions that I've been getting lately, primarily the benefits of it, and then whether or not it's really an adaptogen on the same caliber as reishi or cordyceps or holy basil, gynostema. Let's talk about my experience with it, um, what I feel to be the best way to use it, how often, how much to take. And then, again, because uh, Makuna contains high levels of L-DOPA, can we become addicted and can we overdose? So on that note, the thing that makes Makuna so fascinating, so interesting, and so beneficial is because it contains high concentrations of what's called L-DOPA or levodopa, which is basically a precursor to dopamine. And basically when we take it in, it can elevate our dopamine levels, which of course makes us feel good, makes us feel happy helps to you know increase our attention span our concentration so it helps to mitigate attention deficit um, as well as having kind of a calming yet mood lifting effect um, typically this is what people notice and then over the long term it's attributed to have kind of libido enhancing effects as well as being a secretagogue which means that it helps our body produce more growth hormone which helps us just basically stay younger and feel better because from my, from my understanding from my research growth hormone is something that declines over time meaning we kind of de we produce a lot when we're really young and then we hit a peak and then we decline and that's a lot of the aging process so that's kind of the, the main thing that makes Makuna what it is and it's kind of its claim to fame is its high levels of L-DOPA so because it can elevate our dopamine levels the first question that a lot of people have is, okay, well, is this a drug? Can you get addicted to it? Can you overdose? And can you just throw your dopamine out of whack? So from the research that I've seen, there hasn't been anything that indicates that you can overdose on it or that you can, you know, harm your neurotransmitters. The, the research says that basically, if you don't need the dopamine, if you're already feeling great and you're already balanced, you'll just basically pee it out. And that'll be fine, meaning this L-DOPA is really a precursor that our body can use to produce more dopamine. It's not something that's gonna go in and just stimulate us up you know, in a direction where we don't really need to go. So can you become addicted to it? Definitely not. Can you overdose? Probably, but you can overdose on water, you can overdose on air, you can overdose on everything. So when used reasonably and intelligently in the proper way, who knows, very safe, very eff efficacious, and fun to use. So the next question would be, is Makuna an adaptogen in the same caliber as reishi or cordyceps or gynostem or some of these more well-touted adaptogenic herbs? Now, I'm not sure where people started calling Makuna an adaptogen or where it really got that term. And from what I've seen, it's just something that people made up on the internet, I think. I haven't actually seen any real substantial information to back this up. And from my own experience, I don't really feel that it has an adaptogenic property. You might be able to make an argument for it because it you know, boosts dopamine and makes you feel good, but it doesn't have the protective, intelligent modulating effect on the whole adrenal, hypothalamus, pituitary um, feedback loop that many of the other real adaptogenic, true adaptogenic herbs do. So in my opinion, in my experience, I wouldn't classify it as a true adaptogen. It is incredibly beneficial, but it's definitely not an adaptogen. Secondarily, my experience with it is that if I take it every day over a period of time, let's say a week, two weeks, after a while, I just don't even notice it anymore. I don't even really feel it, the effects. I don't even really notice it in my drinks. So I have to take some time off, whether that be a week, two weeks, a month, then come back to it. So I feel like the most intelligent way to use it would just be every couple of days or every day for a little bit. Or if particularly if you're in a situation where you have some serious imbalances or you're dealing with some serious, you know, attention or depression or something like that, of course you're gonna need a different, you know, a prescription or different, you know, strategy. So you can experiment and use it every day and see if that works for you. But I feel like it's best, you know, alternating a little bit so that your body doesn't really get used to it so much and that feeling is always fresh. And Makuna is always great when you're making you know, drinks for a social event, when you're making something for people, for friends, or you're going to a party, you're going out, or you're doing something like that, 
and you need to have your mood lifted and just really feel great, Lacuna is perfect for that. And that's primarily how I like to use it is just if I'm you know, going to work on a project, be very creative, be, you know, listen to music, watch a movie, go out and see a movie, go out and do stuff with friends or do something like that, or I just want to feel really good and uplifted, Lacuna is awesome for that. And I like the way it tastes, I like the way it blends up in drinks. Typically, the form that I take it in is a concentrated extract. And I generally don't go over a teaspoon a day. So do a half teaspoon or a teaspoon, and that would pretty much be it for me. And I think that's a really reasonable dosage. Of course, the extract that I'm using is coming from Hyperion Herbs, and that's actually up on HyperionHerbs.com now. It's finally out there, it's finally available, finally public. And um, that's a 10 to 1 concentrated extract, so that's why the dosage is so low. And you'll see probably other Makunas on the market, and the concentration is nowhere near as high, so you have to take a lot more to get similar effects. So that's really my experience with Makuna, and you know what I really feel about it. And it's a great herb, it's a really fun herb to do, to have around, to experiment with. Is it an adaptogen? I don't think so, I haven't seen any research that says so. Is it a, a tonic herb on the caliber of reishi mushroom? I don't really think so. It's incredibly beneficial for people who are dealing with depression, you know, anxiety, stress, you know, dopamine deficiency, attention disorder, all these things. It's incredibly helpful and I wish I would have known about that when I was, you know, 14, 15, really depressed, not really knowing what to do, feeling like crap. I wish I would have had Makuna back then. And from what I've been hearing from people I've been working with who've been taking it, who have depression, who've had these kinds of issues, they're really getting good results and really just loving it. And on that note, I've also heard David Wolf mention in a couple of his lectures that he's had really good results with working with people who have Parkinson's. And he's saying in some of their instances, you know, from the first, second dosage, they're getting a lot of relief and they're having a lot of their shaking start to slow down and their nervous system is starting to improve. So Makuna is a really interesting and really fascinating herb and it's one that people need to know more about. So that's why I'm making this video. That's why I put it up on Hyperion Herbs. And if you have any questions or comments, post them below and I will talk to you soon.